السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل واحسن حج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه في الاسلام بدعه كل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار All praise is due to Allah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. And all praise is due to Allah, and if we try and praise Allah properly, then we'll never be able to do so. And may the after salatu salam be on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May the best of peace and blessings be on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Allah azza wa jal is definitely the one to be praised in the beginning and the end. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin, we're able to fast this blessed month of Ramadan. Alhamd. And now that we have reached the end of Ramadan, and Ramadan will be leaving us in the next day or so, and this is the last Juma of Ramadan, I thought that it would be much, it would be very appropriate for us to speak about the importance of being truly thankful for this blessing that Allah Azza wa Jalla has bestowed upon us by allowing us to fast this blessed month of Ramadan. And I ask Allah, I ask Allah, I ask Allah Al-Azim, Rabb Al-Arsh Al-Azim, and to qabbal minna siyamana wa qiyamana. I ask Allah, the Lord of the glorious throne, the, from the wedge, his face of majesty, that he accept from us our fasting and our prayer and our sadaqat, and always we keep in mind that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Whosoever fasts, man sama Ramadan, iman wa ihtisaban, qafur al humad khadab an dambi, wa qamakha Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That whoever, whosoever fasts the month of Ramadan with faith and hoping in Allah Azza wa Jal's good pleasure, then Allah Azza wa Jal will obliterate, wipe out all of their previous sins. And as we all know, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, that the blessed month of Ramadan and fasting in general, there are so many benefits of fasting. Many we know and there are so many that we're totally unaware of. And one very important aspect of fasting is that it should teach us to be chakra, that we be thankful that we understand what is the meaning of thankfulness. 
and giving the true thanksgiving to Allah Azza wa Jal. So today, inshallah, would like to speak about being grateful servants to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because it's very difficult for anyone to speak about being thankful to Allah without stepping on some people's toes. It's very difficult to speak about being thankful to Allah without people feeling that we are talking about them. But wallahi, we're not here to point fingers or to hint at anybody. What I intend is that I want all of us that by the end of Ramadan, which is going to be ending in a day or so, that we end off our Ramadan being true, grateful servants of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the truth must be told that a lot of us are very, very ungrateful. La hawla wa la quwwata billah. Many of us, many of us, act as if other people owe us something. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no strength and there's no power except what Allah Azza wa Jal. Many of us, especially living here in these lands of fluency, act as if other people owe us things. And we have to understand that this type of a mentality of feeling that everybody owes us something or they're indebted to us for something is a disease in the heart. It takes away from the qira'ah, the thankfulness and the contentment of our souls to the point that nowadays most people or the majority of people hardly find the courage to thank other people for the favors that we do for each other. And this is a disease that is spreading to our youth. That now our youth are becoming more worried and they're suffering from apprehension. And as we know, children or youth, they don't always listen to what we tell them to do or do what we tell them to do. But they most of the time do whatever they see us doing. So our children or our youth are now becoming so ungrateful. They're becoming picky eaters. They're suffering from all of these types of social ills. Why? Because they're getting it from somewhere. And the majority of the time is they're picking up these bad habits from the elders, from our parents or from whoever they come to close contact with. So we have to remind them. But first we must remind ourselves that the Prophet Sallallahu he said in authentic hadith, Man lam yashkirul nas, lam yashkir Allah. Who has not thanked the people, they have not truly thanked Allah Azza wa Jal. And being a person who has a qalb shakr, a thankful and grateful heart, is a person who has been blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal, one of the greatest blessings indeed. Because this, this hidden aspect of worship is something which only Allah Azza wa Jal can truly know about us. Because we can say that this person or that person is ungrateful. He's an ungrateful wretch. He doesn't want to this and he doesn't want to that. But only Allah truly knows what the situation is in that person's heart. Why they do or why they do not do. What we deem or we expect that they will do. So we have to lower our expectations of one another and look within ourselves of what we are expecting of others, that we should be the first to do it. Because the, the attitude or the outlook of the believers is that when we do things, we do not do things in expectation that we're expecting somebody to give us a pat on the back or to thank us or to shake our hands or to thank us in public. No. Because Allah says that about the believers, that they say, Innama mu'timakum li wajillah. That we give you, we feed you, we give whatever, we do whatever we do for the face of Allah, the good pleasure of Allah. La nurid minkum jalan la shakura. We do not need any thanks or any words of praise from anybody. So this should be our attitude that we should take from this Ramadan, that we should be thankful servants of Allah. And we don't try and give a, a sham type of a thanks and gratitude to each other in front of people. Because we know people are listening or we know people are watching. But we should try and be true 
thankful servant of Allah because it's customary as Muslims that we say Alhamdulillah or we say Shukrullah or when somebody does something for us we say Jazakallah these are customary things that we say and these are expressions which are and have been firmly established in the Quran and authentic Sunnah that we say Alhamdulillah Shukrullah Jazakallah and most of our du'as in the day and in the night they begin with Alhamdulillah Ladi. Most of our du'as, when we go to bed at night, is alhamdulillah. When we wake up, alhamdulillah, ladhi ahyana. Before we start, we say bismillah. At the end of our food, we say alhamdulillah. Before we finish our drink, we say alhamdulillah. Before we start our prayer, we say with alhamdulillah. So most of our du'as and our everyday interactions as Muslims, we should begin with alhamdulillah. But the problem is, and I have to be frank without any tongue and cheek, is that it's not just an expression that we say on our tongues. Alhamdulillah is an expression that comes, it permeates from our hearts, from our limbs, from the sweat of our brow. When we say Alhamdulillah, or we say to our brother, I say Shukrullah, Ashkuruk, or we say Jazakallah, we say Jazakallah Khair. But what do these words mean when we say these things? These generally we can say means that we're thanking Allah, for whatever has taken place between us or somebody else. We're thanking Allah. When we stand up to pray, we start with by saying, Alhamdulillah. But what does Alhamdulillah mean? What does it mean to be a true, grateful slave of Allah? Because as we mentioned last week, and we mentioned before, that a lot of us are very fortunate in these parts of the world. That we have large sums of money in our bank accounts. A lot of us are very fortunate that we have nice cars, we have nice clothing, we have very, mashallah, tabarakallah, nice, comfortable homes to live in. And there isn't anything wrong with having nice things. Because in Allah, Jameel, Yihibu Jamal, the Prophet said that Allah is beautiful and He loves beautiful things. In Allah, Yihibu Nira, Afara, Ni'mati Al Abdi, O Khamaqa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said that verily Allah loves to see the signs of his blessings on his servants. So Allah he likes to see these things. But the problem is, although a lot of us has been blessed by Allah with so many sources of income and large houses and cars, so many things, but yet we are still unfortunately very ungrateful. And it's easy for me to say but when we look within ourselves and we speak and we speak to each other and we ask, how is work? Or how are you living? How is this? The majority of us, because we have become spoiled, are becoming ungrateful. That we grumble and we complain about having a job. We grumble and complain about the income that we have lost because of this or because of that. We grumble and complain about almost every single thing. Or if we say Alhamdulillah, we don't really mean Alhamdulillah. And I am not the one to judge. We are the ones to judge ourselves. When we say Alhamdulillah, do we really mean Alhamdulillah? Because Allah says, بَلْ insan عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا وَلَوْ قَامَ عَذِيرًا Allah says that the human being is the best judge of themselves. Although they want to give every excuse why they say this or they say that. Why they give this, why they do that. Allah knows the hearts. So it's not our position to judge anybody. So Alhamdulillah is a well-known Arabic phrase. And it has three basic parts. First, al, the Alif al lam Al, the, belonging to, possessive, Alhamdu. The praise, the gratification, lillah, the hamd, the praise and recognition of whatever it is that we have been bestowed with belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives whomsoever He wants. Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives to whomsoever He wants. Allah Azza wa Jal, He increases to whomsoever He chooses. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he decreases whomsoever he wants. But it is not our position as his humble slaves 
his ibad to be grumbling and to be complaining about the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. If it's in Allah's qadr that he gives us more and he gives to somebody less, it's in Allah's hikmah. Allah is al-hakim. So we should never ever complain. And we should always remember and understand what is the meaning of alhamdulillah. And it's very few of us who really can grasp. It's not meaning that we know the Arabic language. Alhamd. It's something which is belonging to Allah Azza wa Jal. All of the praise belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether we have or we have not. But we have to always remember that alhamd, it belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. So when we're doing that, we're giving that to Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in his book, With azana rabbukum, in shakartum azidannakum, in kafartum in adhabi la shadeed. Allah Azza wa Jal, he has made a proclamation, the adhan, Allah Azawajal has made a proclamation about himself that if you give thanks, if we are thankful to Allah, and then Allah, then Allah Azawajal, he will increase whatever we have. But if we are acting as if we are kufar, this is the mean, the root meaning of kuf, is that a person is ungrateful. Or the person, he covers up the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. He denies and he acts as if he doesn't have. If we are ungrateful, then Allah said his adab, his punishment is severe. So we should never act as if we do not have. When Allah knows full well, we know and Allah knows full well that we have. And we should be very, very thankful to always be generous, to share the blessings. And always knowing and keeping in mind with surety. The Lord wa Jal, He will increase us in our blessings. The noble Sheikh, the Imam of the Sunnah, Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi, he has stated in regards to being a person who has a qalb in shakran. Listen very closely what the Imam has stated. Shukr is to display the effects of blessings of Allah upon you, upon the tongue, upon the limbs, acknowledging that in our hearts with love. And witnessing that by our limbs and also by way of humble submission to Allah Azza wa Jal and increased obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah wa Akbar. When a person is truly thankful for Allah's blessing, they will never say that my work is ibadah. They would make the balance. They cannot work, work, work and forget about worshipping Allah and being thankful for Allah's giving him this job. We cannot be a person who just works for this dunya and forgets about the Lord of this dunya who has provided us with the ability to work, with the aql, with the intelligence, with the capability, with the physical capability to work. So we have to ask Allah from our heart, truly, to make us a people who is truly thankful for his blessings. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Whether we realize that or not, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, whether we acknowledge it or not, Allah Azawajal has given us everything. And this is what Allah Azawajal says in his book, in Surah Ibrahim, ayat number 34. Allah Azawajal says, Allah Azawajal says, in the Surah Ibrahim, ayat number 34, that he has given us all that we have asked for. Allah Azawajal has given us all that we have asked for. And if we try and count the numerous blessings of Allah Azawajal, we would never ever be able to do so. But the human being, mankind, is oppressive to themselves and ingrate. And this is the root meaning of kuf, is ingratitude. So we have to be very careful and be on the lookout that we do not become kufar, believing that we are Muslim, by being ingrateful, being an ingrate for the many blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. There are many people who are sick and they are incapable of fasting. If we are healthy, we have to thank Allah that we are able to fast. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. In this short ayah, Allah has explained to us that he has given us everything that we have asked for. But the point I'd like to make is that 
if we try and count the blessings of Allah in the name of Allah, Allah ta'suha. If we would try and gather up and put into a bottle and try and enumerate the many blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon us, we would never ever be able to enumerate the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. It has been narrated that the Prophet Dawood alayhi salam used to say and ask Allah in his supplication, Oh Allah, how can I ever thank you? Oh Allah, how can I ever thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Dawood, he said that you acknowledge that you cannot thank me enough for what I have bestowed upon you. Then you have thanked me. Then you have given me the thanks that is due to me. Allah Akbar. So when we look at ourselves and look at the many things that Allah has bestowed us with, and we think, how can we thank Allah for these things, for these many blessings? It is impossible for us to even enumerate the blessings upon us. And it is only when we become humble, when we humble ourselves, then we'll be the one who is the most blessed person on the face of this world. May Allah bless us and give us the Qalbin Shakra. May Allah give us the heart which is truly thankful for the blessings of Allah. Amen. Bismillah, salatu wa salam, ala sallallah, wa ala alihi wa sahabi wa tabi huda wa ba'd. Another very important point that I'd like to point out in regards to those individuals who we have no right to judge, who are seemingly acting as if they are ungrateful for the blessings of Allah. They complain, they make excuses that this is something which is coming from shaitan. We should try our best not to judge our brothers or sisters for why they are complaining about the situation, why they are not giving the praise to Allah. We should try our best not to judge them. Because when we're pointing our fingers at them and judging them, remember Allah is judging us. And all of this judgmental attitude is coming from shaitan. We have to remember that. We should not judge our brother or sister for why they are complaining about the situation or their lot in life. But we have to understand that this type of an attitude is permanently from shaitan. Listen to what Allah says in his book about regarding Iblis, the shaitan, our open, avowed enemy. Allah he tells us very clearly regarding our open avowed enemy shaitan Iblis he will say because you he blames Allah for leading him astray he says oh Allah because you led me astray shaitan led himself astray by being with the kabir for not bowing down to our father Adam. But shaitan, he blames Allah. He says, because you led me astray, aghwaitani, surely I will sit and wait against them, meaning who? Against all of us, all human beings. And I will sit and wait against them on your straight path. I will be sitting and waiting for them. He's not waiting for them at the, the bar or the nightclub. Or any of these places of fire, because those people are already gone astray. That's the little afia with the bat. I mean. But the shaitan says, I will be waiting for them on your straight path. Listen to what he says. Then I will attack them. I will come to them from before them, from in front of them, from behind them, from their sides, from underneath them, from up above them. And you will not find most of them being thankful. Allah Akbar. Allah made it very clear that these are the khutwa the shaitan. That the shaitan, he will sit and wait for us on the straight path and he will come from, to us from every direction so as to make us, to make us become what? Ungrateful. This is the way of the shaitan. And when he gets us to be ungrateful for the many blessings that Allah has bestowed on us that we can never enumerate, then it's easy to take that person astray. So this is why, my dear brothers and and Iman, that we always have to beg 
and pray to Allah and ask Allah to make us be thankful. We have to beg and pray to Allah to remove those waswasa of shaitan from our hearts. This is what Allah says, Adhkuruni adhkuruk. Remember me, Allah says. Remember me, I will remember you. Be grateful. Give thanks to me and do not be an ingrate. This is kuf. When a person can lead a person into kuf. When a person is becoming an ingrate. When they even find it difficult to say thank you for any small favors that another person does for them. They find it difficult to even thank the person. La hawla wa la quwwata la billah. Ibn Abu Dunya has narrated that also in the, regarding Daud alayhi salam. Asked Allah, what is the least? What is the least of the blessings upon us? Allah revealed to Daud alayhi salam, take a breath. Breathe. How many people are on ventilators? They cannot breathe. How many people, they have to sleep at night because they have sleep apnea. They cannot sleep unless they have a ventilating machine. Alhamdulillah, that we can breathe, inhale and exhale. This is the least of the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. Also, Abu Dhar, he reported that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen very closely what the Prophet said to Abu Dhar. That the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya Abu Dhar, Oh, Abu Dhar, do you say that an abundance of possessions and of wealth is the wealth? Abu Dhar said, yes. A person who has a lot of wealth is a wealthy person. The Prophet Sami asked Abu Dhar, do you say, Abu Dhar, that a person who has a lack of possessions is a poor person? Abu Dhar said, yes. A person who does not have much, he's a poor person. The Prophet ﷺ, he, requ- he repeated this query of Abu Dhar three times. And each time Abu Dhar, he gave the same answer. Yes, a person with a lot of wealth, he is a wealthy person. A person who has a lack of wealth. Very little wealth, he's considered as a poor person. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, the wealth, the wealthiest person is qanaat al-qalb. is the person who has self-contentment. This is the wealthy person. Whoever is wealthy in their hearts will not be harmed by anybody, no matter what happens in this world. Whoever is poor in the heart will not be satisfied, no matter how much wealth they have in this world. Verily, he will only be harmed by the greed of their own souls. Allah Akbar. The Prophet made it very clear. It's not the abundance of wealth or the lack thereof. It's the qina, the contentment in the hearts. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, and Iman, that Ramadan is over. I want us to keep in mind that one of the least things that we can gain from this Ramadan is that we should be thankful. That there's a lot of people who are unable to fast. There are a lot of people who are forced to fast every day, inside and outside of Ramadan. And they're content with small things. And they're very happy to receive some small bowl of rice or maybe some butter on the rice. They're very happy to get those things. But we take those things for granted. We're in a laham. No meat, no kurma, ma fish, we get we, we should be content with whatever we have in front of us. The Prophet ﷺ, he would go month after month with not a fire burning in his house. And they asked Aish Radana, how did you sustain yourself? Aswadan. And the two black things. I need dates and water. So let us end off with a very practical example of how we can be thankful servants of Allah. Especially in this land of affluency. Is that we should be in the habit of making such a shukr. That we're making sujood a shukr. And this is something that any of us can do. That we are showing our gratitude to Allah. When we receive something good, or we receive good news, or Allah has averted some harmful thing from us, we make sujood a shukr. And this sujood a shukr, this thing, is something 
which does not require us to do anything out of the ordinary. We don't have to say, okay, I'm going to mix the shukr and we're going to go and make wudu. We have to face the qibla. No. None of those things are a must for our, the acceptance of our sajood or shukr. All we have to do is be thankful for whatever Allah has given us. And this is something which is mustahab. Sajood or shukr is something which is mustahab. It is a, rec- a highly recommended sunnah, which the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba and the Salaf, they used to do. Whenever they received something good, whenever they heard of good news about themselves or somebody else or their brother, or they averted some harm from them, they would, make, they would fall down and make such a shukr. So my dear brothers, salam and iman. May Allah Azawajal bless all of us. And may Allah Azawajal accept from us our siyam and our qiyam. May Allah Azawajal allow us to be ummat and shakra. May Allah Azawajal bless us and make us a truly grateful ummah of Allah Azawajal. Because we know that there are many people who do not have nearly as half as much as what we have. And they find it in their heart to be grateful for those things. Let us pass this on to our children so they cannot be such picky eaters or petty. May Allah Azawajal bless all of us and bless our families. And give us more so we can give more to others. I mean, in Allah, I'm like you, Saluna Allah, Nabi, Ya Ayladina Amenu, Salo Ali Sam Tasliman, Alhuma Salila Muhammad, Wal Ali Muhammad, Kama Salita Ali Ibrahim, Wal Ali Ibrahim, in Nakahamid Majid, Alhuma Barakala Muhammad, Wal Ali Muhammad, Kama Barata Ali Ibrahim, Wal Ali Ibrahim, in Nakahamid Majid, Robin Atin, if you didn't have it. Wafra, not in Adam, Bakim Salam.